Alright, Circuit Main here, and we are back for the next little segment of the Brony Show 100 episode, which is now the interview with Everfree Northwest. I have with me two great individuals from Everfree Northwest. I have Gemini Star and Hello. Pony Tim. Hello, how are you? Alright, and uh, why don't we go ahead and hear a little bit about yourselves and what you do for Everfree Northwest. Uh, we'll start with Gemini Star. Alright. I'm the Pollocations Director for Everfree Northwest. That means I handle uh, producing the con book and pocket guides and basically anything printed that you see at the con, anything that goes into physical production that has the con's logo on it. I had my hand in it somewhere. And that's about it. All right. And we also have po and Pony Tim. Uh, what is your position in the Everfree Northwest con? Uh, yes, I'm the interim director of media and PR. So basically, uh, every time you see a press release, every time you uh, hear us on an interview like this, um, you, know, you see us uh, uh, any time you see us, uh, you know, through Facebook or Twitter. Um, well, I usually it's usually I either I had a hand in that, just like either it's I sent out a uh, press release to our uh, PR guys to put on our uh, various websites, me talking with. Uh, podcasts uh, or uh, with uh, interested media parties who want to come to the convention uh, no, that kind of thing so basically I just handle the uh, the media that wants to come and uh, come to the convention as well as uh, try and get uh, Everfree Northwest out there and let everyone know about hey we have this convention it's going to be a really good time you should really come Definitely it is. Uh, second year running, and it's already creeping in close. You only have a couple of weeks left. I believe you're the only convention between now and TROCCOM, which uh, which actually probably, st I believe, started actually er earlier today or later today. or I don't <laughs> I don't know. At some point between now yeah. and some yeah. and wh wherever Friday <laughs> vanished. Yeah, it's going on right now. Actually, I was talking with uh, Neil from uh, Draw Ponies over Skype a little bit. Uh, uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, he was just talking about uh, how he was having a great time over there. So, yes, they, they are uh, uh, they are doing stuff right now. All right, that is definitely great, but we're not here to talk about TROCCON, of course. We're here to talk about Everfree Northwest. So, for those, uh, those who haven't heard of Everfree Northwest before or and have been pretty much stuck under a rock, um, could you tell us a little bit about Everfree Northwest? Well, Tim? All right. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you handle this. <laughs> well, Everfree Northwest, uh, we are the premier uh, My Little Pony convention in uh, Seattle. And, uh, yeah. In the Pacific Northwest, really. Yeah, mm. true. And, yeah, last year we kind of surprised everybody by starting out pretty small. Uh, we thought we'd see three, four hundred people, maybe as high as five. And then, next thing you know, we're in excess of 600 and can't hold any more in the first hotel, so we have to add on a second hotel. By the time the smoke cleared, we had 1,500 people at convention and really couldn't not do a second one, you know? Mm. Of course not. It's definitely always great when you uh, have a nice little con going and it ends up exploding into something much more massive than you can ever imagine. Have oh, you yeah. have you seen that kind of response uh, this year with the con so far, or has it has it escalated since we last talked, which I believe was the uh, fundraising stream for the Traveling Pony Museum? Uh, well, we've definitely seen our numbers pick up, and I'm figuring since we have till what is it uh, tomorrow that pre-registration closes. That's true. Yep, I figure we're probably going to see a pretty big swarm of people trying to get in at the last minute going, oh I've only got one day left and then at the con you know when the door is open we're probably going to have even more people going oh I forgot to pre-register can I sit in and yeah I, I think you can still get in but we'll get more money from you <laughs> so those of you who are even thinking of going to Everfree Northwest now might be the time to finally pick up those passes All definitely right. is yep Okay, um, let's see. Well, here's something uh, that everybody always wants to know about the different conventions out there. Um, is there anything unique to your convention that is due to its location? 
Ooh, well, actually, we've got a whole bunch of interesting stuff in the area. You know, tourism, we're putting together, hopefully we'll be able to get this together in time, a little guide of local attractions. And we're not just talking the Space Needle. I mean, that's good enough, but you've seen it once, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. There is so much other stuff to the Seattle area. We have the Experience Music Project, which is a great little museum that's got all kinds of music and sci-fi and media and other stuff going on. We have uh, the gorgeous Luna Park, which you just have to go to for the name alone. Mm -hmm. We have uh, just some of the most beautiful landscape that there is to be seen in the world. I love this place so much. And there's plenty outside of the con. As far as within the con, what makes it uh, what makes it unique because of the area around? Well, it's right there in the name. It's hard not to look outside the window of any building in this area and look at the forest and the mountains and think, yeah, that's the Everfree Forest out there. It's it's rich and a little mysterious, and it's everywhere. That's what inspired the name. Hmm. Any uh, plans on uh, using that for like some sort of weird um, ever free escapade, like finding the sea serpent or maybe the uh, manticore or even a snipe? Well, I do know that we're working it into a couple little aspects of the convention. I can't say too much. I don't want to give away the surprises, uh, but we'll be playing with it just a little bit. Well, um, instead of the uh, surprises for the convention, uh, what are some of the panels that uh, you, you believe that people would be looking forward to that are going to be uh, showing up at the convention here? Uh, we have so many great panels this year. Actually, we just uh, released a uh, actually uh, yeah we just released a press release uh, about our writing events uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, we actually for writing we have thir uh, we have over a dozen. Uh, separate uh, events, actually, uh, just related to authors and writing. I mean, we uh, we're actually going to have the uh, uh, we're going to have a special screening of the uh, fanfic documentary. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of uh, writing panels on just like a literary merit, uh, character development. Uh, we're, there's also going to be a, just a one of the events. Just a hangout. Just come hang out with your favorite uh, authors and uh, of fan fiction, mm -hmm. and just yeah, just chill out. Yeah. So uh, now, also, uh, what would Everfree Northwest be without Pony Stock? We are of course coming back with Pony Stock 2013, and uh, this year we're going to have 20 new and returning artists uh, who will be playing just a plethora of different uh, musical styles, and it's gonna, we're going to have a party each uh, convention night. It's going to be a good time. And gaming, actually, we're going to have a bunch of, uh, actually have uh, several uh, developers, such as uh, Legends of Equestria, Milo Investigations, uh, they're going to have their own panels at the convention. Uh, there's going to be an overall gaming panel, actually, hosted by the Blue Screen Bronies. Uh, that will go over just like a game creation. Um, back to music, we have three separate music panels. Uh, let's see, uh, there's acoustic or, uh, or uh, let's see, yeah, there's an acoustic one, there's one that's still to be announced, and there's uh, orchestral. Uh, mm -hmm. We also, oh, and we also have our contests. Uh, we actually will have uh, cosplay contests, uh, we also have a PMV contest, which I want to bring up really briefly. The PMV contest actually is uh, the submission process for the PMV contest is actually ending in two days. So uh, yeah. not only is registration coming to an end tomorrow, well, technically uh, it's midnight for me. So uh, so uh, I guess technically today, 24 hours. But uh, the registration for uh, like to be able to submit uh, for the PMV contest. And this is not only a pony music videos. We've added a second category, pony movie videos. Now, stuff like uh, adding ponies to trailers or comedy sketches, or so basically non-music submissions. Uh, you have until uh, the next two days to submit those. You have to. I have to admit, um, I see even in uh, anime, I see a lot of anime music videos, but I don't see really anime used for comedy sketches or for. Um, 
like movie panelers as much as ponies are. It's kind of interesting how widespread are the uh, different videos can be created around here. But, yeah, no complaints oh, yeah. though. <laughs> oh, completely. Yeah. Oh, well, it's it, one of the neat things. I mean, it's yeah. a fandom that has sprung up in this day and age, uh, pretty much completely within the the height of the internet and the capability of sharing video and such. So, you know, those editing tools are everywhere and everybody has access to them. So mm. we're seeing a saturation of that sort of stuff that most other fandoms just haven't really had the opportunity to. They didn't start out with it. And so it's not as much a tradition for them. Mm. Okay, um, let's see here. Um, I got a couple of questions here from Deal or Deal, do you want to ask one of them? Sure. Uh, I have myself muted because Ty Mittens and all that jazz. Right. Um, so be, both of you being on sort of the advertising and uh, information side of the convention, what are some of the perks that come along with those positions compared to other aspects of helping set up a convention? Perks? Do, are there perks? Do I get perks? Oh man, they keep me locked up in a dark room. I occasionally <laughs> they throw they throw bread rolls in there, and I'll occasionally get water, and I have to make a comic book. I, I believe that's what the government refers to as a pressure cooker. You get yeah. bread rolls. I think I, that's the perk I, of his position. I, th I think that's <laughs> what they are. I think they're bread rolls. Yeah, I just decide on the uh, on the friendship of the universe. Got you. You're, 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 so what you're saying is you're sort of a changeling. You feed on the, the ambient friendship that just floats around. I have to deny any allegations of being a changeling. I have never been, nor will I be a changeling. Well, that's exactly what a spy changeling would say. So, we will <laughs> just anyway. Uh, um, what what's your role? A lot of what you guys would do is preparation for the convention as far as getting the news out and having pamphlets for everyone while they're there, but what's your role once the convention is actually underway? Well, actually, uh, uh, no, I I'll can go, go ahead and start. And, uh, for media, actually, uh, when the convention uh, starts, we're actually pretty busy as well, just because uh, now we're actually uh, we're handling the media that does show up at the convention, uh, you know, showing them around, uh, pointing out to people, oh, hey, you may want to talk to that guy, that's a cool guy. Uh, uh, being assisting the media, uh, helping uh, the media will come to us. Uh, like, oh, hey, I would like to talk to um, Amy King Rogers, uh, who we just announced actually uh, earlier this week. Um, but yeah, I want to talk to Amy King Rogers. Well, then we would go ahead and talk with uh, our guest relations. They would uh, talk with, uh, and uh, they would talk to on her side, and. Uh, See if we can make that kind of connection. So, basically, we're we're weighing hand on foot on, on the uh, media entities, and also to make sure that uh, like nothing goes wrong as far mm -hmm. as uh, the media goes. Okay. So, uh, no, uh, the preparation is only a part of it. Uh, when we actually get on the floor, uh, they then it's a whole other uh, thing, just as busy. I can imagine. So, I'm actually. Um looking forward to going to BrodyCon this year and doing uh, some work for VIP relations there, so I'll get a, a good first-hand look at just how chaotic stuff is uh, behind the scenes. So I can't just yet appreciate it, but um, I'll give my pre-sympathetic <laughs> feels to you for uh, all that stuff that goes on. Um, is there anything that uh, attendees to your convention should know about the area as far as... Um, to prepare for, maybe anything to do with the weather or traffic or perhaps laws that may differ from state to state. Uh, be... I'm going to leave this to uh, Chemna because I, actually I, I don't even live in the Seattle. That's the funny thing. You're staffing for us and yet you're not even up here. Yeah, I live in, I live in Arizona. I live in the same state as Set, uh, Sethisto, actually. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah. As, as far I, as... I'm oh, sorry. No, yeah. So yes, yeah, so I co. I fly out to a poly convention. Like I'm all the way in the south. I fly up to a poly convention all the way in the north to work. I think I'm a little insane. I have flown further for cons just to work there, but that's a long story. As far as the weather here, uh, what I would tell people if you've never been to Seattle before, especially during the summer, there's this impression that it's always gray and cloudy and rainy. That's winter. That's not summer. In summer, you will get sunlight.
for most of the day. You will get high temperatures, well, relatively high. It depends on where you're from. But be ready for summer weather. Don't think that you can get away without sunblock. You will roast if you're outside at all. It's just like anywhere else in the country for that. Honestly, be prepared for sunlight. It does happen. Uh, last year we had a lot of it. Uh, of course, last year we also had a lot of walking up and down hill, and that's not going to be so much an issue this time. We are not split across two hotels at the opposite ends of a huge hill. Uh, as far as laws or anything, um, <laughs> well, I can't speak to that. I'm not a lawyer. We do have a lawyer on staff, but uh, he's not here in the call right now. Right. Uh, I, I can ask. Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. I was going to say, all I can say is try not to be stupid and we'll be fine. Yeah, I. that should be, you know, standard. So basically, you think. get out of the house and they just... Nothing go outside of hopeful common sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was more along the lines, I guess, really, it's something people would just Google, honestly. But it was more along the lines of um, traffic laws or gun laws and things like that. Because in some states, you can have concealed weapons. Others, you can't. Many places, the permit doesn't carry over. But like I said, that's really something that people should be looking up as it pertains to them. So, Well, I, I can say there's been a little bit, of, uh, little bit of attention because Washington is one of the few places in the country where you can legally take in marijuana. Uh, as far as the law on that, what we can say is the hotel doesn't let you smoke. They just don't. Mm -hmm. If you smoke in your room, whatever it is, they're going to charge you a fee for cleaning it up, and they'll charge you each time they find that it's happened. So, don't. Basic, so, basic smoking laws, laws apply. Smoking laws. Yeah, if, if, if you're gonna, yeah. yeah, basically abide by the laws of the hotel and stuff, and whatever you do outside the hotel, it's not our business. Hmm. So you heard him. Drink up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I think we'll say that later. Okay, let's see here. Um, um, I I do have an interesting question uh, about the panels here. Were there any panels that you have for uh, coming forever free that you didn't expect to happen this year, and yet somehow something happened to make it, you know, just like oh look at that, we can do it. Well, uh, seeing as I'm very, very close with our writing track advisor, I do know that when we suddenly said, hey, we're going to have this, uh, this writer, one of the writers from the show, uh, she was like, oh, well, I hadn't really planned for that, and now maybe I can come up with some panels real quick involve her because I had no plans. <laughs> and so she went into a little bit of a bit of a panic. Okay, now what do I do? This is great, but what do I do now? So, yeah, I don't know any of the specifics on that. I couldn't remember them, and it's also getting very late for me. So, I'm surprised I can still remember my own name right now. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. I'm being a little awkward. It's, I can't put my thumb on it. Why? But it's just the, the late night, sleepy eye, brain fart stuff. Yeah, it's why I'm babbling a little bit. It's why my voice is a bit weird. I probably sound a bit like a guy right now. It's because it's getting real late. That happens. Yeah, it's uh, late for me. And actually, I have work at 6 in the morning tomorrow, so this is going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, then we, um, we definitely express our greatest gratitude that you were willing to hold out this late in the evening to do an interview with us. Actually, uh, I... Up until this point, I was working on media uh, work, so I was I was doing stuff anyway. Okay, then. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's see. Um, is there anything that um, that is um, you're particularly excited for for this year's Everfree Northwest? Oh, I am. Oh, wow. I am very excited for Pony Sock 2013. Come on, 20 artists, uh, two concerts. I mean, come on. How is that not Awesome. I mean, I don't. What other descriptive words do you need besides awesome for that? Circuitastic. Okay, I can. Awesomely, <laughs> That's a good one. awesomely That's a really circuitastic. Good one. There yeah. we go. Yes, I'm yeah. becoming a word. <laughs> awesome, terrific. Uh, 
<laughs> awesome tabular, man. Uh, or, fantabulous. But, oh, you, you kids and your words. <laughs> right, back in my day, we would just point and grunt at things, and everybody understood us fine. Uh, uh, Walk uphill to the con, both ways, in 30 feet of snow. With the sun yes. blazing down on our heads. And... That's right. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, every anytime you get uh, a My Little Pony convention going uh, with a great, like, music track, uh, with a great, uh, like, a uh, bunch of uh, community musicians, and you get a concert going, it just, it's a recipe for just a great, good, just rocking time. I mean, I, I've been to, uh, I've been to a few pony conventions at this point, and I always make a point to stop by at least for a little while at all the concerts, mm -hmm. and they are intense. I mean, these guys really know how to party, and uh, it's a no, it's just a great time. Uh, I, I have to admit, I'm a little bit more sedate. I tend to be the one to go to the other panels that are going on. I'd say more informative stuff, but it really depends on the panel. I mentioned the writing stuff before. One of the guests. Uh, one of our fandom guests, uh, Skywriter, uh, if anybody ha is familiar with that name from Fim Fiction and such, uh, he'll be at the convention, and I've known him since forever. I mean, really forever, like uh, over a decade and a half or so, way before Ponies, way before any of that. Uh, we, you know, we were sharing writing and such way back in the day. So this is actually going to be the first time I get to meet him in person. So it's going to be personally exciting. But also, he is a fantastic writer and a great personality. Wonderfully funny person. I am looking forward to seeing everybody's reaction to, you know, the writing panels are not going to be just this boring sort of, oh, yeah, okay, whatever that was. Uh, they're going to be plenty interesting, too, just not as loud. Yeah. And if they do get us up, then holy cow, man. <laughs> I, do have a, I do have an oddball question. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen Brony Doc or not. I imagine there's a good chance you have. But uh, one of the interviews they had in there was with uh, the people they were following. was this one guy who had a lot of social anxiety, anxiety disorders. Um, and he had a hard time, um, mostly from stress, like finding his way around to the convention and getting used to the crowd. So I was wondering... If perchance someone is considering going to the con, but they have these sort of social issues, um, how easy is it to find a way around the convention and the areas surrounding it? And uh, what opportunities are, gonna, are there going to be for them to meet in small groups um, during this convention? Well, I can say, uh, for my part, as publications, one of my jobs is to make sure that any information is conveyed as clearly and usefully as possible. So getting lost at the con, not knowing what's happening next, not knowing where to go, I'm hoping to minimize that. We'll have a pretty clear schedule of events, we'll have a pretty clear map of the hotel, and there will be plenty of little places you can kind of duck into, get away from the big crowds, maybe a little bit quieter, and uh, other than that, I do know we have some folks who very much make it their mission to find, you know, if somebody's having a little bit of trouble, sort of take them aside, find out what's going on, maybe chat with them a little bit. This is a very friendly group of people. You know, I've been in several fandoms, and the, the My Little Pony fandom is one of the best for it. Folks help each other out. They're very good about it. So... I, I think it'll be a good time, even if you do have that social anxiety. And I know plenty of folks who do. I think you'll have a good time. I'm sure that's going to help someone out, at least um, assuage some of their anxieties about it. Um, now, I know we're all, we all have good stuff to say about the community, but what, would you, what are some interesting things or things of note about the culture in the area that the convention is located in? Um, how personal are the people that are there? Um, are there any uh, maybe traditions or social norms there that maybe differ than in other parts of the nation we should know about? Ooh. Well, I suppose that makes me resident Seattleite here. Another question for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here being quiet, just twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> just say ooh, ah, and nod your head even though we can't see it. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Nodding my head, sort of, you know, waving my hands in the air as though it were of no consequence. I, the 
the culture around here, I suppose, it's hard to say because everybody perceives it a little bit differently. I tend to think of Seattleites as being fairly friendly. You know, nobody's going to grumble at you if you smile. And they're, you know, they, they may not jump immediately to greet you. You know, they're not a caricature of friendliness, but they're not going to be hostile. Uh, they're very accepting of pretty much any sort of person, any type of person. Uh, folks are very socially liberal minded around here. So you don't have to be afraid of, you know, are people going to stare at me? Are they going to think I'm weird, etc.? They're pretty good about it here. They've seen Stranger. I mean, Seattle's home to a lot of weird. So, eh, pony folks were nothing. So, don't really expect the uh, quintessential southern hospitality that you'd find in the lower east coast, but it is pretty pretty much a be and let be uh, culture there. Yeah, people are pretty laid back about things. All right. Okay, right. so we don't have to worry about um, burning torches and people coming after us uh, south of the Bible Belt kind of thing going. Yeah, you're, you're not uh, going to get, like, you know, beaten up, dragged into an alley and mugged. Unless it's consensual. I mean, if you pay for that service. I mean, I know people if you really want that, but no, it's not going to happen randomly. No, I'm I good. I got my I own torches. I don't know whether I should be more surprised that there are people that do that or that you know people <laughs> that do that. <laughs> Oh, I'm just making that up. <laughs> I'm going to level with you. I will, I will make things up during this interview. Several things I say will not be true, but they'll be fun. Gotcha. Oh, um, Master Clockwork brought up a point earlier. At least I believe this is what he was saying. But are there any volunteer opportunities still available for the convention, even if there uh, may not be any perks that go along with it? Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, I know we still need stuff in, let's see, art show. I think we might need, need some in gaming. Uh, we have plenty of opportunities just for general staff, people to uh, do all kinds of odd tasks around the con. There's always something, you know, uh, you know, watch this door for a little bit or go bring this to this other person or things like that. You know, kind of gophers, yeah, as gophers. Uh, we would call them in other, other fandoms. But, yeah. Uh, plenty of opportunities. Uh, let's see. I should be remembering off the top of my head exactly what email address to send people to. It's probably it's probably staff at everfreenw.com. I hope so. I'm, for you. Uh, keep talking and I'll look that up. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure I'll get corrected by somebody else here in not too long. Uh, or maybe not. I don't think they're paying attention to me. It's okay. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I believe logistics still could use a couple, and I actually could use uh, another yeah. one or two people for media. So uh, I still need some people. Okay. Um, I'm noticing two people in a chat room here. Uh, Master Clockwork and Flip Saute. It seems like they know quite a lot about the convention. Are they also part of the... Yes, actually, they are. They are changelings. See, we, we've uh. been infiltrated by changelings. So oh. they're... Oh, yeah. They're evil. Through and through. No, uh, let's see, Master Clockwork, uh, exactly what department was it? He's in uh, Con Ops? Yes. Con and, Ops, uh, it's Con Ops, yes. Oh. Yep, and uh, Flips is uh, in charge of our business. Uh, he's uh, the head of business. Oh. Yeah, and they've both been doing a great job. I have to say, especially Flips, that's because I work with Flips a lot more on, you know, des I do designs for the merchandise and such that we'll have at the convention, so I end up talking with Flips a whole lot because... That's kind of his bailiwick. So, uh, yeah. Oh, they're both great. They've been doing wonderful stuff for us. Oh, well, they definitely deserve a little bit of shout out here. They're, right, for those of you who are watching on Archive, unfortunately, we won't be able, you won't be able to see the chat, but they're right here getting along with our chatters and also giving out little bits of information about the con. But apparently, yeah, so you're going to have a half life goat there for sale, apparently. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and breakfast actually, for us. Actually, to apply to the convention, you're actually going to want to go to everfreenw.com slash apply. That's the website you're going to want to go to. And if you want to send an email to us, uh, you would want to go to staff at everfreenw.com. Oh, so I had that one right. Cool. Yeah, I just forgot the website. 
Okay. But yeah, so and, uh, there, so uh, there is a perk. Uh, the first year uh, is not comp, so the first year you still buy the badge. However, e after you get that uh, first year out of the way, each additional year, I got the next year, you actually, your, ba uh, your badge is covered. So, for example, I staffed last year and I paid for my badge. But this year, my badge is comped, and so I'm covered. So, uh, there, that is one of the perks. Uh, uh, there, there are other perks. I know that there is a surprise that's being lined up for staff, but I can't talk about that yet. Uh, as far as other things, you have to understand that being on the CONCOM, on the, the top level of you know, directors of departments and such, I, I barely am aware of most of those perks because I don't have time to think about them. I'm usually running around and doing stuff. And mm -hmm. so by the end, it's like, oh, we had these posters. And I'm like, we did? Oh, yeah, we had this other thing that, you know, every attendee got. Did they did? Oh, <laughs> okay. I was I was too busy panicking to notice. So Yeah, and uh, I actually, I know, I mean, last year, actually, uh, I'm not sure if we'll do this this year, but uh, last year, for example, uh, we actually had something special with the uh, guests where uh, we actually had $10 signatures instead of the usual 20 uh, So we had, there was actually, oh, yeah. so that was really nice. That was a nice perk. I got a few signatures uh, that way. Um, but yeah, again, I can't confirm or deny if that's going to happen. I have no idea, again. Um, but again, just just because you may not get a comp badge for the first year, again, each additional year, you get a free badge, even if you staff or not. It doesn't depend on if you're staffing or not. Um, then uh, there are other perks that will, uh, that will follow. So there are, are other things. Nice. So yep, definitely a plenty of reason to uh, get in get in touch with Every Northwest and be part of the staff if you have the time and ability to do it. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, a lot of fun. do you think this would be a good time to talk about? I mean, uh, why? I mean, I like to talk about why uh, I think it's. Uh, I prefer actually being a staffer than just a regular attendee. Oh, go for it. Yeah, go. Yeah, knock it, knock yourself out. This is your platform, my friend. Yeah, actually. Uh, I remember the first year I uh, did the uh, staff convention was actually uh, Everfree 2012. Uh, I was like, you know what? I decided to go. That was uh, when I finally decided to go whole hog into the whole brownie thing. At that point, I was still kind of. Uh, I watched the show. I liked some of the stuff, but I don't know. I mean, do I go whole hog? And I saw all the cool stuff that was happening at Everfree uh, Northwest. I'm like, I'm like, well, I just. So many cool guests and all the like, all the great events and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go. But the problem is at the time, uh, I can't remember if this was uh, when you guys uh, when we had sold out of a thousand or uh, uh, the first or second time. They're out of badges, so I'm like, ooh. So how do I get a badge? Oh, I volunteer. I have to pay for a badge, but I still get in. So that's how I first staffed. Uh, but the thing it, is, it, it is so much fun. And that's that's the funny thing is the first thing a lot of folks imagine is well if I'm working for the con I'm not going to get to enjoy any of it, but you do from a different perspective for some of it. But it's not like you're working the entire time. I, I did mention the con com thing where yeah I'm kind of panicking most of the convention, but that's different. We're a special crazy breed. If you're just general staff, you'll have a certain number of hours that you do work for things, but during that time. You'll get to see people that you weren't expecting to see. I never know who you'll interact with. You never know what you'll see going on. You get to hear some pretty neat stories about things. And getting to be part of bringing the convention together, that brings its own special kind of reward. Uh, not to sound too sappy about it, but it's one thing to be at the convention and enjoy the atmosphere and meet all kinds of people and do whatever. It's another thing entirely to know that you've helped enable that for somebody else. Uh, the look when you've assisted somebody, you know, maybe you've shown somebody where to go, given out information or whatever. The look when they're really genuinely happy to have gotten that, man, that is worth any amount of time spent getting there. Makes it all worth it. Pretty much, uh, she stole what I was going to say for the most part. <laughs> but yeah, again, just it just feels great to belong. And again, I feel like uh, I've made so many friends just by being a member of the staff. I mean, if I had just gone 
by myself, uh, I, again, I wouldn't have known anybody. But by being a member of the staff, uh, I already had a bunch of people that uh, I met and talked with and worked with and became good friends with uh, through this invention. And it's just, again, it's crazy and it's, and it's loud. It's, and when you're working, sometimes it gets crazy and loud and busy. And it's active and it's great. Again, it's just all over the place. And uh, just a great time. And also, I mean, sometimes you even uh, actually uh, got to hang out with a couple of the guests as well. Because I actually got to hang out with uh, Andrew uh, Francis for a little bit uh, at last year's con. Because really? I, yeah. You got to hang out with more guests than I did? And again, it was only for, yeah. Yeah, it was only for a little while. And uh, again... No, it wasn't like I was chummy chummy. We went out for dinner, hang out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, no, nothing like that. Um, but no, like yeah, like Andrew Francis. I actually got to talk with and hang out for like brief time with like Andrew Francis and uh, Stephen Andrews. Lots of Andrews. I uh, just realized. But yeah, again, and on, I, I think I say fa safely say. Probably would not have happened if I had not been a member of staff. So you know, yep, you never know who you're going to meet if you become a member of the staff. Mm. Or best case, uh, you might end up being security and telling people that they can't go in the room and being the big mean bouncer. Yeah, we're not going to have so much of that this time around. That's mm. that's not what security is for. I mean, you know, it is important that they make sure that people are following rules and such. But what we really want. Uh, an atmosphere for our security folks is they're a little more like park rangers. Yeah. They're there to make sure that everybody's having a good time and that everybody is safe and, you know, that there's not too much chaos. You know, a good amount, but not too much. Right. Just yeah. uh, one and picnic basket at a time stolen. Yeah. They're there to help out. Yeah, exactly. They're there to help <laughs> out. You know, they'll have information also. They'll know how to direct you to where you can find out anything else you need to know or things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, th th that's what they're there for. So, you know, they're, they're not going to be standing like bouncers at doors going, nope, you don't get to go in there. Uh, they'll be a bit nicer about that. They better be. <laughs> <laughs> or else. Yeah. No. Or else. Man. Yeah, nothing like having the director of publications come down on your head, huh? Oh, yeah. That's intimidating. <laughs> He'll smack you with this giant pamphlet. I'll throw the book at him. Oh, yeah. That... But um, bum. Oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> no! Oh. Not the bathroom! No! <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Um, We are getting silly as we're getting tired. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't believe I went for the park ranger joke of all things. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's see. I, I can imagine that there was quite a lot of uh, trial tribulations getting this uh, put up for a second year in a row. Was there was there any kind of really crazy events that happened while you were trying getting all this set up for the second time? Oh wow! Um, <laughs> the big question is how much of it can we talk about? Because some of it is stuff that you know you can't really talk about until maybe after the con or maybe yeah. ever because it's like yeah. <laughs> Right, right. Crazy yeah. things happen at every convention. They they just do. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. like uh, how the fact that we've replaced half the staff with changelings, I mean. <sighs> that, you know, I just, I cannot speak to these allegations. Speak I to cannot confirm nor deny the presence of changelings on the staff of Everfree Northwest. <laughs> yeah, I think for the most part, though, it's, um, uh, maybe it's a lot, a lot of, like, maybe little things, just like, uh, Every time you do a convention, again, you have you're dealing with like a bunch of people uh, trying to do a lot of things at once, and uh, so of course you, lines of communication have to remain open, mm -hmm. and uh, people have to keep talking. And every once in a while, you uh, there might be a little stumble here and there. Usually, nothing like too big. Like a, I may have like a accident. Like a, I work with Gemini actually uh, quite a bit. Um, again. She sent me for like those really nice uh, banners uh, for the, our uh, press announcements. Oh, yeah, uh, those. Yeah, and uh, every once in a while, I'm like, "Oh, hey, can you resend me that one?" Um, yeah, I saved that to my like uh, the school computer instead of to my flash drive, like a dork. I, I think that happened once. I'm like, she's like, "It's like how many how many times do I have to send you this file? Where's it going? <laughs> Are you eating it?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I there's. 
<laughs> Sorry. Uh, there have been a few opportunities for, you know, kind of face palmy type stuff where it's like, oh, so how's it going with this task? Me, I, I thought you were doing it. Well, if I'm not doing it and you're not doing it, who's doing it? And, you know, next thing you know, you've got a, you know, blonde maned gray mare on a thundercloud and everything's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, uh, and also, I mean, like, uh, I think one of the hardest aspects is uh, like, uh, just wording everything so you're coming across as clear as you can be. Um, okay, I mean, just, you, you know what you mean, but depending on how you, uh, how you put it can mean, like, and, uh, other people can misinterpret it. Actually, uh, like, uh, a recent, uh, like, a uh, PMV contest actually had a, a section in it that was confusing people, making them think that they could only submit one video, when in fact the, uh, you can submit up to three videos. So, uh, like, uh, so that's something you have to be very careful on, to make sure that what you mean is what's getting across. And we do get these miscommunications between staffers. I mean, it's, it's kind of like herding cats. When you think of a professional organization, you think of like a, a company, it's, it's a tight ship. But those are people who've worked together for perhaps several years, many years. They have a corporate culture or a certain way that the company does things and they all understand it. And part of being hired on is they get trained into it. We're a volunteer organization. You know, nobody's getting paid. Uh, we're all coming from different walks of life. We all have different experiences. We don't necessarily have those skills of communicating with each other yet. Those of us who've been on the staff for over a year, you know, we're coming up on our second year of this, we're starting to get a pretty good idea of what's going to work and what isn't. But even even one year isn't enough time mm -hmm. to really know the people that you're working with. And there's a lot of turnover. Some people work con for a year and they go, okay, next year I'm, I'm taking off or whatever. And you never know who you're going to be working with. Stuff comes up. So... It's, <laughs> I mentioned the chaos earlier. There's mm -hmm. a lot more of it behind the scenes than I think most people realize. Uh, it all pulls together. Somehow it all works. But it's incredibly chaotic. Well, and also, I mean, actually, using your uh, analogy, Gemini. Uh, sure. Again, this is still, I mean, relatively speaking, Brony, uh, Brony conventions are, uh, or My Little Pony Friendship is Magic conventions, uh, again, because, uh, this isn't strictly brony. This is uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic overall. This is meant for like everyone to be able to come and enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. Like there's still relatively, there's still a relatively recent development. Um, so I mean, even BronyCon, the most established, uh, is what I mean, it's like third year, uh, just starting into its third year. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, bro, like um, My Little Pony, uh, fan, like My Friendship is Magic fandom is only as old as the show. Um, so, uh, again, I, we're like a startup company in a lot of ways as well. I mean, we haven't been, we're still relatively new uh, in now, a lot of we, ways. That, go ahead. We do have a lot of staffers, though, who have experience with other fan conventions, but, you know, not all. I'd say maybe, maybe two-thirds of our staff, half to two-thirds, have never really worked for another convention before. This is a whole new thing for them, so they don't have experience. Some of us have been at it forever. I've been working on stuff for conventions for 10 plus years. Uh, we have one guy working with us, Gene Armstrong. He's our hotel coordinator. He's been working for conventions longer than, well, I think back then they didn't have electricity. He's been around a while. <laughs> but yeah, like, but, but he's uh, incredibly experienced. But yeah, like uh, on the flip side, as uh, Gemini was saying, this only my second year uh, being a part of a convention. Uh, I only started staffing last year, and well, since then I've this is now my going to be my fourth convention staffing. I've also done staffing for Equestria LA as well, so uh, pulling a little double dewey there. Um, a lot of shared yeah. staff between Everfree Northwest and EQLA and a few other conventions. Yeah. Pretty cool to see. Oh, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm quickly getting experience, um, and of course, like, uh, doing this job, um, yeah, I've really, really, uh, you learn very quickly, but yeah, I mean, it's still, 
it's still a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. Well, that does uh, bring one good question to mind. Uh, we were having uh, people over at a Kitty Mark Con that uh, wanted to work with us to do a fundraising uh, stream, but unfortunately it didn't quite pan out before our episode 100. But it does give me a, a thought here for you know, a good question, since uh, both of you have at least some experience building a con, what are so, what's some advice that you can, you can give to anybody out there that's thinking about maybe creating a con of their own or maybe grouping a bunch of people together to do a con or to help out a con or anything like that? The uh, biggest... Oh, actually, if you want to go first. No, I was just about to say, again, I, I only got into it uh, right... Like, again, when you it was already at about 1,000, so... Uh, and I was just a normal media at that point, so this is all you, Gemini. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say the biggest thing is talk to folks who have worked for other conventions. Don't just say, well, you know, we've got a kind of good idea of how these are put together. We've been to a few, and, you know, the, the power of friendship will see us through. Well, friendship doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy to rack up bills if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, just last weekend... I was at a con, a sort of meta con, if you will, called ConComCon. It's a convention for convention organizers uh, that happened rather near Seattle, about an hour out last weekend. And yeah, we get together, share wisdom and information, and sometimes pick up additional staff. You know, it happens like that. And this is where everybody who runs conventions or is a part of making them happen gets to share their experience and uh, it's vital it's absolutely vital because no matter how long you've been at it there's still something to learn uh, i mentioned gene earlier who's been running sci-fi conventions and furry conventions in the pacific northwest for i don't know how long and he is still learning things by watching the pony fandom by being part of that and going wow, never thought to do it this way, or these guys have a very different approach and somehow it works. On the other hand, we've had to learn a lot from him because a lot of us didn't know what we were doing going in. And some cons, you know, I'm not going to name names because it can happen to any fandom, any con, but we've had some cons completely fail because they just didn't know when to ask for advice, when to ask for assistance from other conventions and other fandoms. We can't do it ourselves. We shouldn't do it ourselves. One of the biggest lessons of the show is you need friends, and your friends will help you. And we have friends in other fandoms, and they will help us. So listen to other cons and listen to other fandoms. Mm -hmm. And I, actually, um, I just thought of a couple of points as well. Another thing you may want to look at into is... Um, you may want to gauge the need of uh, to have such a convention in your area as well. Uh, it's all about like location and uh, just um, if this is more getting into the business aspect of things. Just um, <clears throat> if there's if there's not so much a need uh, for a convention in your area, you uh, you may want to like uh, reconsider it just because there are like a uh, how do I want to put this again like um. I've seen yeah, places yeah. where there are too many conventions trying to start up in an area that kind of saturate it, or yeah. a convention wants to start up somewhere where there just isn't enough support. You know, mm -hmm. if if you're in the middle of the frozen end of Canada, you know, up where there's not much to see but, you know, snow and seals and we get out there, penguins, I, I'm not one of those Canadians, I'm sorry. <laughs> but... I mean, I'm pretty much Canadian, but I'm not that far north. I, but in that area, you're not going to start a convention and expect 3,000 people to show up at it. There just aren't that many people or you know, that many fans of the show. And I've seen several cons, again, of all fandoms, get a little too ambitious and go, well, that con pulled in, you know, 50,000 people in their first year. Well, that's because they were in a major metropolitan area and they were for a much broader subject. If you try to do that in, I don't know, Kansas City or something, and you expect 50,000 people, good luck with that. It's not going to happen that way. So, yeah, if you want to put it on, I would say also, don't be afraid to start small. 
Um, again, like uh, Everfree Northwest was going to start off pr reasonably small, and again, we expanded um, very quickly. But uh, we had that barrier of, well, okay, if the need wasn't there, well, we had, uh, oh, it was kind of like 600 or 1,000. Uh, it didn't have to be as big as we ended up being. So I would want, I would say, don't compare yourselves to like the really big, but don't compare yourselves to BronyCon or like uh, to Everfree Northwest. Find what makes you unique. Uh, what and uh, what can get people to come to you? But also, don't be afraid to be reasonably uh, to be smaller. Uh, that again, there's is the need for smaller conventions that are more local for people. There is that need. And uh, again, so you fill that uh, niche, and who knows, you may have an every Northwest story where you're able to expand. There are small cons, there are big cons. I've had experiences at each that I couldn't have had at the other. I've had brilliant times at conventions of 150 people. I've gotten to be part of things at conventions of over 3,000 that couldn't have happened at the smaller ones, and I've been in conventions of... Uh, untold numbers. I can't count that high. But they each have a different flavor and different things that go on. And there's no shame in being any one type instead of any other. I uh, don't think, oh, this is just going to be 200 people. It's barely going to count. There's a lot that can happen in a small con. A certain type of camaraderie that will have a different feel than, say, a larger con where you get to see a little of everybody. But, you know, you don't necessarily have those nice those nice little uh, warm spaces of seeing the same people each day, really building that up throughout the course of the convention. Mm -hmm. It's a different experience, and they're all good experiences. Just know which ones you can afford to have. Yeah, it sounds like we're basically... It's all uh, sums around the idea of like knowing your audience, know what you have. Like Basically a lot of having a lot of knowledge. Be, be Twilight Sparkle. Have oh, knowledge. No. <laughs> <laughs> Twilight Sparkle, she's crazy. Well, okay, don't be crazy, Twilight. Be studious, Twilight. There we go. Oh, okay. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, that we had a small mention here down in uh, Utah, Salt Lake, Utah. The um, uh, wow, I can't rem can't remember what it's called anymore. We'll just call the Salt Lake Brony Convention, but it was. Yeah, it was a small one. It pretty much uh, catered only to bronies and didn't really get a lot of people from the show in. Maybe three, four hundred people. But, oh, man, it was... I had the biggest blast of my life. It was freaking awesome. Well, that's another yeah. thing. You know, there's a huge focus on, you know, which guests have we got at this con? Uh, Everfree Northwest, we had this gut blowout thing the first year. We had uh, how many? Like 86,000 guests or something? I forget. It was a huge number. We got a lot of people kind of overreached a little bit. And this year, we just didn't have the resources to do it. The environment changed. And we said, well, we can have a brilliant convention with fewer guests. We'll spend a little more time with those guests. We'll make the most of that. And, you know, I think that's going to work out fine. If your convention can't afford to have but one or two folks from the show, heck, if your convention can't afford to have any, Focus on the fandom. And I, I recommend this for any convention, no matter how many guests you can get. Focus on the fandom and what we're creating for each other. There is so much brilliant creative material, so much good stuff being formed within our fandom, that the, the guests are a nice bonus, but we can also support ourselves in that. You know, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. And when the show's gone, we're still going to have those other people who were fans of that show. We're still going to have that community we built. One good voice actor doesn't necessarily equal an entire pony stock. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, again, it's, again, 20 musicians, two nights, <laughs> like, like hours upon hours of music and just a room of people dancing and having a great time. Come on. If you have never been to like a, a pony stock or just any my little pony like a um, rave or electronic or any or like a just dance scene or just music scene you really even if it's not so much your scene I, 
just go. I would just go there for a little bit of time, just once, and just try it out. It just is an experience like uh, you uh, you will not forget. It is a great time. Yeah. So come for the music and stay to watch me stumble around drunkenly and convince people that I am not a changeling. Sounds like a plan. Excellent. It'll happen. Right, Even well. if you were a changeling, you would be the prettiest changeling. Oh, thank you so much. You're oh, the okay. sweetest. All right, well, we only got a couple minutes left here, so we got to get on to the next segment. So do, you, do either of you have any final shout-outs that you want to get out there? Anything at all? Uh, we'll start with Gemini. Oh, my gosh. Shout-outs. <laughs> yeah, uh, I already mentioned Flips. So that's enough talking about him. Uh, everybody, everybody working for Ever Free Northwest has been incredible. They've put up with my grumpiness when I'm afraid I'm going to miss a deadline. They've busted butts just you know to get everything done come through incredible challenges to make this on happen the staff of everfree are some of the greatest folks i've known they are all awesome and i hope that you all get to you know anybody who's coming to the convention say hi to random staffers be nice to them and you'll find out they're great people so there's my shout out everybody working the con See. And how about you, uh, Pony? Well, I'll go actually use my uh, shout out period to name off a few more things. Um, just uh, let everyone know that our policies page has just went up. That's at everfreenw.com slash policies. Just, uh, uh, just go ahead and take a look at uh, policies like general rating, which is PG, Babbitt items, flyers, uh, hotel policies, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, can't believe we got this. Uh, check out our vendors page, uh, every nw.com slash vendors. Um, again, we have over 50 vendors in our vendor hall this year. And again, oh we're, we have, oh, we've got a ton of vendors. Uh, again, like, uh, we have a couple of uh, people from other cons coming in. We have a couple of uh, cherries coming in. Uh, but we have a ton of artists uh, with all sorts of like great stuff from Art prints to jewelry, to ties, to plushies, to hats, uh, to shirts, to all just all sorts of great and fun stuff. Oh, so yeah, caffeinated we're, we're soap. Have, we're gonna have yeah, caffeinated soap. Those are totally. great. Oh, also, there's <laughs> gonna be the the uh, con store, and we're going to have a really really cool event T-shirt, and there's. There's my shout out. That's the one shout out I really got to get out there. Our staff artist, Dana Simpson, also known as Pedantia Pixel, she has been the one doing the character art for those announcement banners and for the flyers and all that stuff. I do the graphic design, the layout, and such. She does the character art. She is incredible. Uh, go see her work at, uh, she has a webcomic called Heavenly Nostrils about a girl and her unicorn, go to uh, www.heavenlynostril.com. It is spelled like it sounds. That is the word nostrils in there, and it's good stuff. And, you know, support her. She is the best staff artist ever. She's yeah. great to work with. Yeah, and and uh, buy, buy the con t-shirt. We'll have an event t-shirt. It's a special just, you know, for one year, forever free Northwest. It's going to be great. You'll love it. And while we're shouting out to artists, I'd also like to send a shout out to Leakfish, uh, one of our, like, a, again, she's a pretty cool artist. And, uh, yeah, oh man, just all the staffers, yeah, so, my last few moments, yes, just shout out all the staffers, uh, to Royal, to Bajai, to, uh, to Flips, to Matt, uh, to, to you, Jim and I, thank Aww. you. You're oh, awesome. thank you. I don't get a lot of shout outs. <laughs> yeah, to Galileo, uh, Kayleen, uh, just my entire media team. Thank you, media team. Uh, just Yes, media yeah, team, you're awesome. Why, thank you. We are, <laughs> we, we aim to please. Uh, All right, well, we'll go ahead and let you go now. And uh, for those of you watching the stream, we're going to end the stream here for just a quick moment so we can go ahead and cut this off and get it up on YouTube a lot quicker, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this 24-hour crazy insanity. And... We'll start the next segment, which I think is uh, Pony Games. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for having us on your show. Well, sounds fun. 
Yeah. Well, definitely, and it was a pleasure having you both. And uh, remember, if you have not gotten your passes yet and you want to go to Everfree Northwest, today is the last day to pre-register. So go now. Do it now. It's a good now. idea. Pre-registering will save you a lot of grief, especially if a lot of people decide to buy it on day of. And, and you also just a few might bucks. get a pair of wings. Yes. It's true. You could be an alicorn princess too, but only if you pre-register for Everfree Northwest. All right. I'm a princess. Are you a princess too? And oh, I'm the prettiest princess. 